1955, we moved into this house. And at that time, uh, Mark was two years old, and he'll be 40 in February. So in February, we'll be in this home 38 years. And we were one of the first to move on this street. Uh, this was all woods, woods and hills, and, and the uh, government used it as a nursery. So they, uh, Buffer and Parr bought it up and decided to build in this area of the I block and J block and so forth. And they built 72 houses. And uh, when we moved in here, we had no sidewalk, uh, no driveway. Everything around here was mud and rocks. No trees as you see it. I mean, they had stripped it. They even sold the topsoil, believe it or not. So we moved in, uh, like everybody else, we started planting trees and the government or the city put those trees on the planting strip and they were just little saplings. All the trees you see uh, were all planted by the people that uh, moved in. This house, which my Viv picked out, the house and the lot before it even started to build, <clears throat> cost us $13,800. Now, that sounds like, boy, what a bargain. Well, it really wasn't because everything's relevant. I had to work two jobs to, to even pay for the house and the so forth. In fact, the company, the, the, uh, they gave us a loan, Central Trust Bank. I had to sell the old car I had. They wanted you to owe nothing. And uh, when we moved in here, the... Uh, Mortgage, uh, in, uh, taxes, uh, everything was $90.06. And through 25 years, when we paid it off, it went up to $141. Mm -hmm. That means taxes went up $51 a month in 25 years. We got into uh, politics, and it all happened of... Uh, I was going down Winton Road in a fancy-looking Chevy coupe with uh, fog lights and uh, spotlights and whatnot on the way to work, and uh, that's old Winton Road. And out from nowhere came this uh, Hamilton County cruiser and uh, pulled me over and gave me a ticket. Well, I wasn't even speeding because I saw him and actually slowed up so he could pull out and, <coughs> excuse me, and go after the guy that really went by me speeding. And uh, so I thought, something's goofy here. So I asked to see the mayor, and uh, who at that time was George Geisen, and uh, went over his house, and I said, I'm not here to get out of this ticket, but there's something goofy going, and I told him the story. And he said, yeah, we know. And so it ended up, <clears throat> as I recall, where this guy, this shows you what politics would do, was being paid to give out tickets for people coming out of Green Hills. So they would have to appear before the mayor, be mad at the mayor, and they wouldn't vote for him. So they'd get their other party. That's, yeah. So anyway, that's how we met uh, the mayor, and he got us interested in uh, politics. The old Marquardt house <clears throat> up on the hill uh, was the only really meeting place in Green Hills. There wasn't any the fire department or Ken Page room. Or, right. So we met in the one back room <coughs> and uh, <coughs> in fact the Legion owned that. American Legion at the time. And they had a bar and a, one room was a little dance room. And the other rooms were they held court and uh, the mayor's court. And at that time, Vivian was uh, clerk of court. So I used to go up there and, and uh, just sit and watch all the crazy things that went on, right. like the guy that was shooting turtles in the park. And uh, at that time, uh, all the cases from the park went in woods. 
Park uh, came to Green Hills. The mayor uh, heard him, and uh, so it, a lot of them were hilarious. The excuses people had, you know. So that was a politics, and then for some reason, I guess like the world is changing today, uh, Green Hills is not the tight community uh, that it was. Uh, for instance, uh, in the late 50s, uh, uh, Joe Maurer brought out uh, the uh, service station, and before that I worked there, and I managed it. And, uh, and then Joe Maurer brought it out and uh, asked me to be manager, uh, so I did. Uh, took the job, and uh, that was in the late 50s. And at that time, anybody who went by that station, I could tell you if they lived in Green Hills. In fact, if I saw some shenanigans going on or anything that looked a little suspicious, I'd call up Chief Baldwin, who was chief police at the time, and he'd come down. And, uh, for instance, one day, this guy staggered into the station, all bloodied up, as to put it, <clears throat> half drunk. And I, he, I sat him down in a chair in the office, and uh, he said, call me a taxi. Well, rather than call a taxi, I called the police. And here what it was, he had wrecked his car in Winton Woods. And the ranger had him in the ranger station. And when the ranger walked in the other room, this guy got up and walked out. And he got up to Green Hill, so they <coughs> rearrested him and <laughs> took him back to, her, to the Rangers. Well, I, I joined the fire department. It was in the late 50s. And naturally, they were in need of people who could work or uh, be on the fire department for the day shift. Night shift was not too much of a problem. So beans I work right in the village at the uh, Shell Station. Uh, I joined the fire department. At that time, it was down about where the hitching post is now, and a little bitty cubby hole where they had a, one engine and w one ambulance, and very small. And then within a year, we moved up on the hill. And uh, I was on the fire department, I guess, probably eight to ten years. And uh, then uh, you took... Uh, state course uh, in emergency rescue and first aid and uh, I got on to the uh, ambulance crew and what you would do is you'd go on at six o'clock at night if you were assigned to six in the morning and in your house you had a what we call a plectron and when that plectron would go off it was a call from the Hamilton County dispatcher telling you that you had this, that, or the other medical problem at a certain address. Well, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, same as they do now, you'd get up, get to the firehouse, get the ambulance going, and <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and respond. But there had been many a night when my car parked outside where the frost was a quarter inch thick on your windshield, and you couldn't take all that time, so the firehouse being a block and a half, two blocks away, I would run up. That was in my younger days. Sure. I'd run up and I'd usually be the first one there and uh, get the door open and the ambulance started or the task unit, whatever we happened to need, and then wait for the crew to show up. And we'd go out and make the call. But you were always a fireman first. And then you worked on the ambulance crew, that was second. Not everybody was on ambulance crews. But you could not just be an ambulance crew driver. You had to also be a fireman. 